Focus on Ports, brought to you by Transnet National Ports Authority. Welcome to this edition of Focus on Ports. Earlier this month, Durban played host to the 40th PEMESA, or Port Management Association of East and Southern Africa Conference. Chairman of PEMESA, Tao Morwe, tells us more about the organization's vision. I think the, the vision is having a, a PEMESA that basically uh, ensures that at the level of cooperation, the port authorities, uh, Southern Africa, East Africa, work together to, um, to resolve and deal with challenges facing them, uh, but also at the same time contributing towards uh, ensuring that uh, regional economic integration of, and cooperation is achieved. Over the years, PAMESA has come under fire for mismanagement. In an effort to reposition itself towards driving Africa's economic integration, Franklin Mzirai was appointed Secretary General in March, replacing Burundi's Jerome Ntibarekerwa. PAMESA's vision for the economic integration of the continent's maritime arena was offset by the African Union's Agenda 2063 a global strategy to optimize the use of Africa's resources for the benefit of all Africans. They've come up with a document that uh, has studied uh, the pot wealth potential that exists in the uh, African maritime domain. And they've put up uh, uh, plans of action that can be now used to fully exploit this potential. Uh, because uh, we still think it is not fully uh, it's not fully exploited. One. Two, uh, how can it be sustained? And uh, three, what other multiple effects will be there if these, uh, these uh, potentials are fully exploited? Now, all these uh, are anchored on activities in um, international trade, the uh, fishery, uh, eco-marine, and infrastructure. The ports are part of uh, this strategy, uh, but are not yet quite prepared to uh, drive themselves towards implementing what, what is uh, identified, what is uh, outlined there as the plan of action that would achieve a full exploitation of African blue economy. So we thought that we should get together, speak amongst ourselves, get experts to tell us, uh, uh, to, to draw the roadmap for us, and then we come out with a, a concrete plan of action which we would uh, then share amongst ourselves and go back to our organization, to our ports and implement. PAMESA celebrates its 40th anniversary this year. Mzirai remains positive about the organization's past and future. One of the things we've been able to uh, achieve is uh, they're in different categories. For instance, we have uh, really uh, uh, worked very well uh, when it came to port restructuring. The structure of the ports had to be, uh, uh, had to be changed to be more commercial oriented than it was as uh, public organizations. Uh, the ports needed uh, more autonomy in implementing their plans, in, in uh, uh, determining their tariffs, etc. etc. And the World Bank, uh, who masterminded uh, uh, and spearheaded this project, thought that uh, you have to separate the port commercial activities from uh, the government. So one of the things we did was first to sensitize uh, the port organizations on the, uh, uh, the significance of these structural changes. Then the second one was to, uh, to uh, implement a toolkit which the World Bank had created, which would be used when these ports are starting to restructure, when they're trying to disengage now from a public uh, government-owned organization into a commercial uh, structured uh, entity. Uh, what is the legal framework? What, how are they going to operate? Uh, how, where are they going to get the funding for development? And uh, there were different structures which were put forward or uh, provided by the World Bank. One of them was let the current port authorities remain as landlord 
and then the private sector should come into the ports and, and do the port operations. Others was do both, give autonomy to the uh, ports, let them be fully commercialized, but they still remain a public organization with, with no interference at all. For, uh, from the government. That was one of the steps that PAMESA was able to coordinate uh, uh, all the posts in this region to, to implement. The other one is uh, the engagement with the International Maritime Organization. International Maritime Organization looks over a, a very big scope of issues but covering environment, safety and security of the, uh, of the, uh, the ports. Uh, you remember the horrendous acts of 9/11 uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and others, uh, piracy, all these things which have been coming up. Uh, uh, International Maritime Organization had passed the resolution that there should be a code of conduct for safety and security at the post, and uh, each port must uh, s uh, adhere to this uh, to, 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 to this uh, code. And uh, if you do not adhere to no no ships will be coming to your port and you get audited. Now, uh, we coordinate these ports in understanding this course, implementation and uh, workshop for people who are going now to uh, really stay on the field to implement the, 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 require, the required actions of the uh, safety, the port uh, facility safety. And then we are also, you see, we have many ports. Each port collects, uh, has traffic, throughput, cargo, containers, but how does each one report? Do you have a harmonized uh, format where people report on, uh, uh, the, uh, on uh, their uh, traffic statistics? Uh, when you, what are the, are the port performance indicators? Is it the same all over? So that we may gauge the post and say, this is the best performing port. So these people should have a harmonized format of uh, reporting. And the others are just to improve efficiency workshops, uh, we look for the challenges they face in capacity and then look for uh, uh, conduct workshops, training to improve port performance in operations and management. These improvements are happening across the continent and fast. Stephen Karingi, Director of the Regional Integration and Trade Division at the UN Economic Commission for Africa, says that the investment landscape is changing dramatically. I can give an example of the, what is happening in the um, different uh, corridors. Uh, uh, from where we sit at ECA, we have the privilege of working with the um, African corridor institutions, say the ones that uh, run the World Peace Bay Corridor, uh, the Maputo Corridor, the Dar Corridor, the Northern, the Northern, the Northern Corridor. And um, from that uh, point, vantage point we've actually been able to observe that actually the private sector is getting quite engaged in terms of um, the operations and investments in these corridors that are actually linked to the to the to, to the port so the world is bay corridor for instance it's uh, you see uh, a huge uh, engagement or a significant engagement of the private sector in the efficiencies uh, of that of, 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 of that port, uh, you see the same when it comes to the to the to the to the Maputo corridor. And I think I may also want to add that um, uh, in the East African region, in the at the port of uh, Mombasa or at the port of uh, Dar es Salaam, there are actually significant investment by the private sector. I think in this work in this uh, conference, you had uh, the presentation by the private uh, agent, uh, the Da the Dock the Da corridor group. And when you look at the kinds of things they are dealing with, basically this shows you that there are private investors there who have seen opportunities in the, in the port um, corridors uh, or in the ports of Africa and the associated corridors where they can actually invest in and actually be able to get a return for their money. Highly successful in the European Union, public-private partnerships have been gaining traction in Africa as well. Looking at the port of Mombasa as an example, I asked John Omingo, head of commercial shipping at the Kenya Maritime Authority, whether PPPs have been effective in improving the bustling port. You can say so because the bulk of what has eliminated the delay, I mean the congestion problems, are private investments. People get land, they put up facilities called container freight stations, and they are able to get the cargo out of the port and now the customer will now come and clear from these facilities. That has helped 
and these are private investments. So they provide the, the more or less the same tariff that the port does. <coughs> and because these have been allowed to come, there are many. Like in Kenya, we are talking about 17 container freight stations. And that brings the element of competition. So when they start competing for cargo from the port, so that you clear from their facilities, there's broad competition. So to an extent that others are even wi willing to offer more periods to keep the cargo in their premises. They are willing to even come down. So <coughs> it helps. There's a lot of private participation. Mari Penanen, Business Development Director at Tanzania's DSM Corridor Group, is not confident that PPPs are viable in the ports and maritime sector. PPPs are extremely challenging because it's very difficult to come to a um, really, really transparent process and that it would be really, it, it, as a concept, it's extremely interesting. But the successful implementation is, uh, it requires so much of transparency and openness. Karingi offers a different view on public-private partnerships. I think they're very critical. Um, I think they're essential. The government cannot do it alone. Um, you can, you as, as a government, you can put the infrastructure or even, but the private sector can be able to provide the rolling stock if you're moving goods from, um, from uh, the ports to the, to, the, to, to the interior. Or if you are moving um, goods within, between, be, between countries, there is actually significant opportunities for the private sector to, to operate. So in fact, if you are to ask me, given the resources, that Africa needs for infrastructure development. This infrastructure, including both energy infrastructure, the port infrastructure, and the associated uh, roads, and, uh, roads and rail, I actually think we need to focus more and more on the resources that we can mobilize from the private sector, both domestic private sector and even international private sector. And at the end of the day, there's a lot, you know, looking at the potential for, for trade growth in Africa, looking at how our economies are growing, any private uh, investor, any person operating in the private sector can actually see the opportunities that there is a ready market. All you need is to have the regulatory framework right and for people to know that they can invest and be able to get uh, their money back and these opportunities are there for the picking uh, in Africa.